Hey there, Weld.com world. My name is Matt Schwartz, and I'm the Welding Geek. Now, have you seen the all these YouTube videos on the rocket stoves? Well, I decided I wanted to make a rocket stove, but we're going to make it on a titanium. So if you want to see that video, stay tuned. project started here at the simple spot here with our sheet. I've got my templates that I drew up in AutoCAD. What we're going to make this stove out of is 063 CP titanium. Um, now there's a bunch of different alloys of titanium. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but we're using CP, which is conditionally pure. It's a softer titanium, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, 64. Uh, the stuff I've actually built knives out of 64. 64 is stronger. This has different properties, but this is conditionally pure, which means it's almost pure titanium, like 98% or something like that. So this is what we're going to be building our stove out of. I went ahead and I drew this rocket stove up in AutoCAD and I printed the, all my little pieces out one to one. So it's to scale and I'm going to cut all my pieces out, get them glued onto my sheet, and then we're going to take it over to the shear shear out all our bits and then we'll work over to our table and get stuff tacked up and that is kind of the route we're going to go here. Now I, that I have all my pieces cut out, I'm going to nest them, try to as, as closely and tightly as possible on our sheet here, but also do that so I can have access to shear every line uh, because cutting titanium is a nightmare. Like I said, we're going to be using a shear which is cold so it'll shear right through it and be like gravy. but. If you're going to take it over to like a bandsaw, you need a special blade or you should be using a special blade to cut that. And titanium is kind of a type of material that you start putting heat into it. It gets harder and just starts eating all your abrasives. So I specifically designed this stove so I could shear most pieces. That's just going to be a, a lot of welding. Um, so I'm going to try to nest this so I can get every line with our shear, making it easy on us. So the next thing we're going to do is I've got a couple of pieces here. They have bend lines on them. I'll go ahead and hook up our little hydraulic bender here. Get the nine he's bent on those, and then we gotta get all the paper off. So when you have this stuff drawn up in CAD and printed out one to one, it's so nice. You have all your bend lines. You don't have to spend your time laying out stuff. So I highly recommend getting your stuff drawn up in CAD if you can and then printing it out full size, 100%, one-to-one, -one, however it comes across on there. So just a tip right there. All right, we're gonna start tacking some stuff here. I'm gonna go over my weld rig, what I got going on here first. Uh, I'm not gonna get too in-depth with the titanium welding yet. We're just gonna get this tacked together and then we'll dive into that. So we're. We're running a Miller Dynasty 280 welder, DC current, 100 amps or so. I might be adjusting that and I'll let you know if I do. I'm welding 100% argon gas at 20 CFM. I'm welding or using a gas lens and a number seven cup with a 332nd E3 tungsten. It's a lot of information right there, but that's a setup I got going on right now. Um, this cup size and other stuff, when we get to actually welding, I'll kind of give you a rundown of what you can use, how you can use it, because titanium is not hard to weld, it's just weird. And I'll get deeper into that once we get this whole thing all tacked together. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna fuse tack everything, or try to, try to make it as cold as possible. And uh, we'll get our piece put together, and then we'll start welding. titanium welding. I'm going to do a quick overview of the proper way to weld titanium. I am not going to weld this rocket stove in the proper way due to time constraints, cost, and it's a stove. It doesn't need to be properly welded. And as properly, I mean, if it was going on a race car, let's say, or someone's life was on the line. Now, is this thing going to completely fail if I don't do it perfectly? No, it's going to be fine. It'll stick together fine. There is a great video on weld.com by Jeff Ray. 
It's called Welding Titanium, the do's and the don'ts. And he goes through the whole process and he does an amazing job of that. So maybe they can link that video to this one where you guys can go check out the actual right way. I'm just gonna do a quick overview on that right now. Now, like I said, titanium welding has to be welded or should be welded, it doesn't have to be, in a completely oxygen-free zone. It's super picky. If you don't, it will crystallize, and when it crystallizes, it will crack and fail. So a couple ways you can get around that if you don't have a purge chamber are stuff like uh, backers. And you can back purge, stick this in here, run argon to the thing, tape it off and back purge it. Or you can tape off this whole entire thing, fill it full of argon and back purge it that way. So those are ways, you, because even the back side of the well, if you zoom in here, you can kind of see where I tacked, there's yellow scale dots. That's not a good thing. It's not the end of the world, but we're trying to stay away from that. It should look like a pure weld on the inside. None, none of this scaly crap. If you're going to use a cup like this, you only have access to a cup like this, you are only going to be able to weld probably three to four puddles and have to stop and let it cool and let it go another three to four puddles, let it stop and cool. You want this thing cooling completely under your argon. Now there are stuff like that they make gas lenses like this, last one, where it's nice and big. You can probably get away with welding an inch maybe and letting it cool. You can also get a, a follower thing that you clamp on your big, so you're just giving yourself more length of weld time because I'll show you when we get welding this thing, you weld a few puddles, you stop, you have your post flow set to 15 seconds or 10 seconds, and you're letting the argon just splash over the well, and letting it cool in that oxygen free zone. Um, if you have like one of these cups, maybe three quarters, half inch, just depends. And you'll see the difference in color variation as you're welding. It should be all titanium colored when you're done in the perfect world. The blues, the purples, the different colors aren't necessarily bad, but when you hit it and totally go away and it hits that gray scale, which I'll show you, that's bad. It's crystallized. That weld will probably fail at some point. But the, blue, the blues and purples and stuff aren't necessarily the end of the world, but that gray stuff is the end of the world for that, that weld. So. I'll kind of show you a few examples on this. I'm not gonna weld this thing 100% because there is a ton of welding on here. So I'm gonna stitch it. That should be good enough for this fun little project we're just doing here. And it will give me an opportunity to show you the right way and the wrong way of what to be looking for when welding titanium. This is why if you ever get anything made out of titanium, it's expensive because it takes five times as long to do everything. All right, decided to set my post flow at 15 seconds. I'm going to use this Furic Fupa Cup number 12 gas lens thingy. I'm using ER tie two rod. The titanium rod comes in four different kinds one, two, three, four. It just gets stronger as you go, like one's the weakest, four is the strongest. So I'm going to come in here and start welding. I kind of marked everything out. You can kind of weld an inch, skip two, weld an inch, kind of skip weld around this thing. That should be plenty good enough. I'm not back purging it, even though you should. Uh, just right now, just don't want to use up all that argon. This is just for fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some arc shots and weld this, start welding this thing up. Don't forget your PPE, gloves, I need my glasses, glasses, welding helmet. As you can see here, this is nice and gold and pretty. That's how it should look. You can see this, this is getting really close to that grayscale. It's not ideal. So it's looking like we can weld probably a half of an inch, gotta have to let it cool, and then weld a half an inch with this Furic cup. Uh, I'll go ahead and actually weld a little bit and just completely pull away, and I'll show you what the grayscale looks like, and then I'm just gonna get busy and weld this thing all up. All right, you can see how it went gray. That gray is no bueno, no good. That's a garbage weld that they'll crack across there if it sees any sort of whatever. 
So this is what we're trying to stay away from. When we are trying to make it look like this, nice silvery, titanium, goldy, beautiful, wild looking. titanium rock and stove build. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, send a like my way. If you got any questions, throw a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the well.com channel here at YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, The Welding Geek, on YouTube. And most importantly, we have a new app, a new weld.com app. It's available on Apple. It's available on Google and other places. So make sure you check that out. It's a really awesome way to get connected into the well.com world. You get access to all the hosts, all sorts of awesome stuff. You can be asking us questions. It's just a great way to get plugged in. So I hope you go and do that. So that's the video. My name is Matt Schwartz. I'm the Welding Geek, and thanks for watching.